guys. Fred and Sheila McCoy, Hatfield McCoy Museum, uh, FredMcCoy.com. I'm watching them cars down there. Okay. Uh, Sheila's behind the camera. Hi guys, hope you're having a great morning. We're on an it's adventure warm. today. Look at Cotton Top there following us. Cotton Top's everywhere. Cotton Top. <clears throat> um, we were up here a couple weeks ago. Show them the church down there, Sheila. That See that? And that there. is Preacher Hans Hatfields. One of his first churches, if not the first. We're at, we're at Church House Holland mm -hmm. in Belfry, Kentucky. Phew. And uh, we've been looking for this grave. We have. Oh my gosh. We didn't find it. Nope. Once again, we want to thank our friend, Neil Warren. Yep. A local historian. And you know, I said something the other day. I hope I didn't come off wrong. I said I'm related to both Hatfields and McCoys. Neil's not related to either. And I said, but he's more knowledgeable than some of the Hatfields and McCoy so-called historians out here. I meant that in a good way because he's not related to neither. Therefore, Neil, where I'm Hatfield and McCoy, I try not to take sides. Mm -hmm. But Neil is not related to either, so he doesn't take sides, period. He just, he's a good historian. We're wore out. Yeah. <clears throat> we come up a big hill just we now. We come up that hill. Oh, oh my oh, goodness. What, how cool is it, babe? 28 degrees. 28 degrees. Yeah. Once again, we just made a four-hour trip. We still got a while to go from here because we're on another adventure after this one. Mm-hmm. Guys, by now you should have saw uh, seen two videos. One of Basil Hatfield's grave in Pikeville, Kentucky at the Deal Cemetery. At the Deal Cemetery, yeah. And that Basil Hatfield was from Elkhorn City from what we could find out. That was actually the uh, nephew right. of this Basil. Yeah, he this is Basil Hatfield, Judge mm -hmm. Basil Hatfield. Back during the feud, it would have been Sheriff Basil Hatfield. Right. This Basil Hatfield is the son of George Hatfield the brother to Preacher Ants, Constable Floyd, Bad Elias, the Blackberry Hatfields. You know, uh, <clears throat> this has been a uh, rough story to track down and get done. Yeah, because Find a Grave said he's buried at Davis Cemetery at, in Stone. Find a Grave says that he's buried in Stone, Kentucky. Who else? And so does uh, Wicked Tree. Tree. Wicked Tree. And she, by now, you've probably done seen that video of us. We went over that graveyard three times trying to find it, make sure mm -hmm. we didn't overlook it. Uh, we didn't overlook it. It wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And that's why Sheila and I always tell you, wicked tree and find a grave you can't depend on. You can't depend on for credibility when you're talking about Jim Vance's military record or the new tombstone that they've put up for him. Right. Um... You can't depend on it for directions, just like Nancy uh, Hatfield Steel that mm -hmm. we're still looking for. In fact, that's where we're going when we leave here. Right. A gentleman left us an email, or left yeah. Sheila an email. We're yeah. going to go see if, if he knows what he's talking about. If he does, we'll be giving him some kudos. <clears throat> because without you guys, some of these videos we couldn't do. Exactly. Uh, Sheila brags on you all the time. Thank you all for your help. Thank you, Mr. Warren. For your help today. Uh, Neil Warren, when we go by after a while, I'm going to make one. We're going to go by the uh, his place. He lives there at the McCoy Well. He lives on the McCoy property. Mm -hmm. And we'll show you his house mm -hmm. just out from where Randall McCoy's home place was and where the well is. And if you're ever in this area and you need directions, you need information, you need a tour guide, you need... That is the guy yeah. that Sheila and I recommend... You go and see. Stop and see sometime. This this man is very knowledgeable, and um, he, he's, he's um, corrected us on a couple of things, and we love him. That's right. You know, some people say, oh, I don't like to be corrected. Oh, well, you get, we don't get mad. Mm -hmm. We want the truth out. We, if, if we've said something wrong or stated something wrong, correct us. That's right. By the time you see, what, babe? I said, like, phew, we finally found him. <laughs> yeah. And when you see this video, you've done seen the first, and we're, mm -hmm. we're in Pikeville, Kentucky, and we're talking about the historical society that has 
pointed your direction towards that basil hatfield over there right that basil over there is this basil hatfield's nephew exactly he was probably named after mm -hmm. his uncle here more than likely and uh, but that's not the sheriff basil that's not the judge basil that's not the basil of the hatfield mccoy feud days right they put them signs up over there i've covered that video i'll yep. go back there this here is judge if you'll look on wicked tree if you'll look yeah. on um i'll post uh, a, a better picture yeah, of it she'll stone. post a picture this says hope h-o-p-e -E. right doves are up there yeah you can see this it says there. judge j-u-d-g-e this mm -hmm. is hatfield h-a-t f-i-e-l-d if you stand at an angle you can see it can you i okay. can see hatfield pretty and good. it's it's wore out it's hard mm -hmm. to see and uh this is him yep. there's no doubt let me get you babe no, it's get okay. up there a minute get up there i'm always getting me you and cotton top get together there but we finally found it thank goodness and uh oh, it's a cold chilly morning 28 in, degrees in eastern kentucky yeah and uh, you go ahead i'm just going to yeah. get <laughs> sun is pretty bright get towards the road down there where we're at mm -hmm. and where this cemetery is yeah Whew. i hear belfry fire department which is just a mile and a half up the road hear them going on a call sounds like and uh sheila i don't know um I'm sure we're going to miss something on this video. If we did, Sheila will fill you I'll, in. I'll add it in. If we miss something, think of something else, we'll, we can just, I can just add it right on the end of it. So. You know, when we were here the other day, Sheila and I, with that being Preacher Ansis Church, yeah. there's a nice sloped hill behind the church. And most churches here in eastern Kentucky, they have a cemetery. A cemetery next to the church. Next to the church, behind the church, somewhere mm -hmm. around the church. You know, Basil was not buried on Anderson Hatfield Cemetery at Blackberry. No. He's not buried on George Hatfield Cemetery where Floyd and right, Bad Lice right. is buried at the Blackberry Grade School. Right, right. And he's definitely not buried at uh, Davis Memorial Cemetery nope. up in Stone. Cotton Top. Where are you going? He don't know. He's... <laughs> He don't know. He don't know if he's Good coming boy. or going. <laughs> Good boy. That name suits him. Yeah. And uh, Sheila and I come up through here the other day when we done the video on the church. Yeah. And we drove to the head yeah. of the holler. The head of the holler and looked, and then we turned around and came back out. And, like, nope, not there. And we looked and looked and looked to make sure that we didn't. And Neil, on the way back, we called him. We said, Neil, it's not there. He said, Freddie. I was told, anybody back here calls me Freddie, of course, Yeah. and Neil and I went to school together. I think I'm a couple years older than him. Yeah. I know I'm at least one because today's my birthday, so Happy I, know, birthday. I know I'm a year older today. Yeah. Um, he said, Freddie, it's, it's supposed to be there, and uh, I said, Neil, we looked at it. Well, we didn't see a cemetery nowhere, right. and that, that, that guy come up here last week. Yeah. With all he's got going on in his life, his and um, found this for us, and called and said, and sent us pictures, and said, "Here, here's, yeah, here it is." Yeah. And uh, which, you know, it's hard to see. You can see that big red roof church down there, but it's hard. You can see it from up here, right. but it's hard from down there to look up here and see these this tombstone. Or, and there's several old stones up here. They are. There's one other stone up here, just like that one of of basil's. And that's an LZC lane. And it's got the doves at the top and it's got hope. You can see that one a little bit better. That's exactly. I wish they would go back over Basil. Uh, like his well, at like least. That, so you can see it's like there. Asa, my great grandfather at the Anderson Hatfield Cemetery. Mm -hmm. And um, Nancy Hatfield McCoy. Yeah, you can. My great grandparents. You, you can barely see. see them now if you don't know where they're at, where they're located at. And we need to eventually get another stone and put up there a little small one just to identify them. That might be what they need to do here is put a small footstone. Well, that's there. the thing about coming out here like we're doing right now. Here's you a video. Yeah. For those people, if you're ever looking for Basil Hatfield Sheriff, Basil Hatfield's grave, now yep. you know it's at Church House Holla yeah. at Belfry, Kentucky. Yep. You can't pay attention to find a grave or wicker tree. It's not there. No. And um, Very misleading. Cotton top.
What are you doing? What are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Look well, at cotton. Yeah, it's all cotton top. What are you doing, yeah. silly boy? Guys, uh, we're going to leave here. We're going to go to Mate One. Yep. We're going to go over toward Beach Creek and once again look for the Nancy Hatfield Steel Cemetery. We're still looking for, well, not the cemetery, but the her grave, hers and her husband's grave. And she was the daughter of uh, Valentine Wall Hatfield, West Virginia Wall. Exactly. And um, so other than that, find her this time. you're not going to close out yet because I'm sure you're going to add some documents and pictures mm -hmm. at the mm -hmm. end of this video. Well, I can still close out and then I'll splice it. Oh. And then that's what usually what I do okay. is I'll, I'll mm. splice it and then add the video, the mm. pictures and documents, and then I'll put that at the end. That sounds good. Neil, before she closes out, she's got something to say. Thank you so much, sir. We appreciate it. We couldn't have done it without you. No, we couldn't. Have. This this would have been one gone without. And guys, anybody out there that can help us, or you've got something that you want you want covered, or you have a question on, if if we can. Now, mm -hmm. Sheila and I can't answer everything. We tell you that we're, we're yeah. not. We don't do magic, but we'll try. We'll see what we can find out. We'll give it our best. And uh, you're up. Good morning again, guys. Like we said. Earlier, here is the Preacher Anses Church right here, and we went behind up, that double wide right there up to the top of there. Which I look, we'll look and see if we can see a better shot no, of it. You ain't gonna be able to see that. That Grace. was up pretty high, yeah, not from here. Yeah, we're uh, we're leaving now. Yep. You can show up them from there. here. There's the little slope to the right that you walk up. Yeah, it's, it's a, a rough one though. Pretty good little walk. Mm-hmm. And uh Can you see anything from here or, or not? I wanna show my guys if you ever have a problem with tailgaters, I get stopped a lot. People flag us down, tell us we left the ranch on the toolbox, but if you ever get stopped or uh, have a problem with tailgaters, just glue you. Uh, that's a plastic Halloween prop uh -huh. for a ranch. But people think I've laid a ranch up there and forgot to get it off. <laughs> Boy, you sh they'll back off fast when they see that. Oh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> all right. Once again, beautiful morning. We're heading out of here. Yep. And um, up there on that hill. Yep. You stand still. I'm trying to get you in the picture here. It's a hard climb going up. Ooh, we we got came, our exercise in. Well, we came down a different way. <laughs> yeah. On the yeah. back side. Yeah. That was easy. And uh, beautiful, beautiful mountains over. here in eastern yeah. Kentucky. This yeah. is mine and Sheila's old our high school is right up the road here, where we went to high school. And, <sighs> Yeah. Uh, this little holler here hit just dead ends right up there, about a quarter of a mile. And uh, probably about 15, 20 houses here. And uh, Sheila, anything else? No, no, we just going, we're just going to add this into the end of the other video there so that we can. Uh, Cotton Top's having a blast. Oh, yeah. He's, he's going to be soaking crazy. wet. When I know you, it. Yeah. I know it. His feet will be soaked. Oh. Hey, guys. Well, I'm not even going to do that. You're just going to add this part in. Mm -hmm. So I'll just cut this off too. We are, Sheila's just about done editing this video on Basil Hatfield. We can't tell you how happy we are on this video because uh, we've run and run and run trying to figure this out and see if there was a mistake or what happened. And, and at least people now know that the uh, Basil Hatfield at Pipewell, Kentucky at the Dill Cemetery is not the correct Basil Hatfield. When you see those signs, that is not Sheriff Basil Hatfield. It's simply Basil Hatfield, his nephew. Uh, <clears throat> you know, this story is about Basil Hatfield and the, the wrong cemetery, the wrong headstone, the wrong grave, the wrong place. And it's also about wicked tree and find a grave, how incorrect they can be, like we've said on uh, Jim Vance's information on, uh, on various people, where you can just go on there and type anything you want and it will, it's on there like it's the truth, like it's for real. You won't believe the times that Sheila and I went places 
looking for cemeteries or something and going by we could tree or find a grave and, and just waste a trip and for us where we live at now it's it's four and a half hours away uh 10 hours by the time you go both ways well, it makes it makes it and that hummer day. about 140 dollars worth of gas so uh it's very important that people uh puts the right information anybody that has access that wants to i'm not going to do it or Sheila's not going to do it but you know Wikitree says that Basil Hatfield is located at Stone Kentucky the uh, uh, 1926 the real Basil mm -hmm. he's not he's at Church House Holler we've covered that while I'm doing this you know our reason we've never researched Basil Hatfield a lot is like we said at the one of the first videos we've done there's three videos on this and that's because of the way that he done Cap Hatfield and the way that he done Martha uh Asa Harmon's wife. The way you done Cap Hatfield? I'm sorry, Sheila. Did I say Cap? What's wrong with me? The way that he done um, uh, Frank Phillips. Frank. No, he didn't do nothing to Cap Hatfield. He gave him a break. Guys, uh, if you look on one of those papers Sheila posted up there, it says that Basil Hatfield appointed Frank Phillips to a deputy sheriff position in June of 1987. June of 1987. Now, follow me along here a little bit because you're going to like this, you real historians. In December, December the 20-something, it'll be on that paper she's posting, of 87, Basil Hatfield fired Frank Phillips from being a deputy sheriff. Now, Frank had gone across the river and he brought a couple back and he'd been over there several times trying to serve Kentucky warrants. This was before the Supreme Court ruled that you couldn't go from one state to the other and get people. So he was there okay. legally. He was there as a Kentucky lawman. Okay. But Mr. Devil Ants has complained to his first cousin, Basil Hatfield. Basil's a Kentucky Hatfield, but he's complained to him. And he's made it known that he's concerned about Frank coming over there and arresting the Hatfield gang, members of the Hatfield gang. What does Basil Hatfield do? Unlike his brother, the Honorable Preacher Ants Hatfield, my great-great-grandfather, Basil Hatfield fires Frank Phillips seven months after he hired him. Seven months after he hired him, six to seven months, he fires Frank Phillips for going over to West Virginia trying to serve Kentucky indictment warrants for doing his job. He fired him on the 20 something of December 1887. What happened two or three days later? January, December the 31st of 87 or January the 1st, 88? What happened? After he fired Frank Phillips, again, even the Hatfields have admitted that. That was the only one that Devil Ants was afraid of, was Frank Phillips. He feared Frank Phillips. After Basil Hatfield fired Frank Phillips and Simon Buckner had put the reward out, they attacked the McCoy cabin. Could that have led up to it? you dang straight it could have, and it did. When they seen Frank Phillips was fired as a lawman, they thought they was free to do what they wanted, and they knew Basil, the sheriff, would cover for them. Now, Simon Buckner come in there in 87 as the governor. He was the governor from 87 till 91, 1891. After they burnt the cabin down, after Basil Hatfield had fired Frank Phillips, that's when Simon Buckner, 30th governor of Kentucky, appointed Frank Phillips as a Kentucky lawman. And that's when Frank started, along with the posse, along with all these people now, because they're, they're mad because they burnt ran old cabin and done all that and killed two more kids. <clears throat> then they start going back and that's when they brought the nine prisoners. Now, you know, I'm going to read something here in a minute, but imagine this. They said that, they said Frank Phillips was an outlaw. Frank Phillips just a murderer, a gunslinger, a gun for hire. Guys, have you ever asked yourself why Frank Phillips, Jim McCoy, the rest of them, but especially Frank Phillips that was in charge of the posse. They were following his lead. He was the law man. Why didn't he kill those nine people? Shucks. He's a gunslinger. He's bad Frank. He's mean. He's a, he's a murderer. 
Why didn't he just kill the nine? Why did he bring them back to stand trial? Don't make sense, does it? If he's the murderer that everybody says he was, or the West Virginia Hatfields. See, he wasn't. He wasn't. He was a law man. He was a law man that done his job or tried to. Now, I went on Wicked Tree earlier <clears throat> looking for something else. And I run across this. Now, we done an extensive video, Sheila and I did, on Frank Phillips somewhere back through those 300 and some videos. There's a Frank Phillips video, and it may even have some of this in it. But it's going to take me about five minutes to go over this. And for those of you that hasn't seen that video, it may uh, explain some things. And, and if you have seen it, it may ring a bell and you remember it. Bad Frank was a deputy sheriff, a freelance gunman, a logger, and an outlaw. Now that's what somebody has wrote on Wicketree about Frank Phillips. Now remember, Wicketree, you can write anything you can want. You want to. He, they could write in here that Frank Phillips was a captain in the Confederate Army. And that's what it would say on Wicketree. So somebody wrote here that he was a freelance gunman and an outlaw. Hmm. Frank never met his father as Billy died serving in the Civil War. True. His father was a... Uh, uh, in the Civil War and he got killed. The feuding led him to leave that home and head to Peter Creek to avoid some of the conflict headed his way as the McCoys tried to pin two murders on him. Now this is in Wicked Tree and it's got, for sources out beside of it, it's got the number two. The number two. Now when you click on number two, guess what that takes you to? It takes you to Mr. Thomas Dotson's analogy. Mr. Thomas Dotson's book. Mr. Thomas Dotson's web page lies damn lies and more lies or uh, lies 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 and and the only person here that's not getting the story correct is poor old mr tom dawson tom dawson and altina waller have done more to distort the history of the hatfield mccoy feud than any other two authors any other 10 authors out there together it's, it's sad, but it's true. Don't, you don't have to take my word for it. Do your research. But as you go to Wicketree and type in Frank Phillips, and when you do that, read. I'm not reading you all this down through here. There's just a, a few lines. I've got yelled in. But read the whole thing that it's wrote. And then look at the source. And you'll figure out who put this on Wicketree. See, anybody can type on Wicketree. So when you look at this story, look at the source, click on that source, and when you do, you'll see it comes up, Mr. Thomas Dawson, the majority of them. Sometimes he'll tell you to go see another book, Altina Waller, Otis Rice, somebody like that, which Altina got a lot of her stuff from Otis Rice. Nobody does their own research. Everybody copies off somebody else. Like Sheila and I out here running around for the last three weeks <clears throat> trying to find this grave and make all this correct and make a correction. People don't do that no more. People don't. And half of the court records and things that people have gotten, they got from Sheila and I and, and uh, another McCoy. And, and uh, uh, it was during this time Nancy McCoy Hatfield moved in with him, the wife of John C. Hatfield, who had remarried in bigamy. Now, they said that she married and it was bigamy. She was still married to John C. Frank and Nancy <coughs> were married on 5 September 18. 95 in Pike County after finally securing a divorce from Johnson, but not before Frank and Nancy were indicted for adultery in 1891. Now again, I see that number two there, which means Thomas Dotson. Now guys, wouldn't you think that if there's an indictment charge out there, Sheila and I post everything that we can because we know you enjoy seeing documentation. These people that speak this stuff or write this stuff in the history on Wicketree is, it's so sad. Now, this man says that Nancy and, and Frank were married, and, but they were be, not before being indicted. They were indicted for adultery. Guys, listen, we don't know. Sheila and I have never found nothing like that. That don't mean it doesn't exist. We don't know if they were or not. With no evidence that tells us that they were, we think it's hogwash. We think it's made up. We think it's written in the history. But it would be nice, just like the gentleman the other day that said, Devil Lance received a pardon for being deserter, but yet he didn't post the pardon. He acted like he had the pardon there. He knew it existed, but he didn't post it. This gentleman says that they were indicted for adultery. 
We've never seen it. We'd like to see that. If it's true, we'll put it up in the museum so we can correct history there. Is there an indictment or is it spoken in the history? Or in this case, did somebody go to Wikitree and write down whatever they wanted? Frank said activities and family heritage made him a wealthy landowner in both Kentucky and Virginia, claiming several thousands of acres. Frank knew he was in trouble. He referred, Frank referred to himself as bad Frank. See, we've never heard that, but I see number two there. I see number two there again. So Frank referred to himself as bad Frank. Never heard that, uh, that he started that name. Uh, it'd be written in the history, guys, according to firsthand family oral history. Did you get that? Listen to the, according to firsthand family history, Frank rode with the James and Younger gang in his younger years. This seems to be supported by naming one of his sons, Jesse James Phillips. Well, here's Jesse James Phillips. There's one of Frank's sons right there, Jesse James. You know, this gentleman didn't do his research because he also says, he, he forgets to mention rather, that Frank named one of his sons, Frank James. One from his first marriage was Frank James, one from his second marriage was Jesse James. Jesse James was a famous person back in those days. Don't mean he rode with them. Family, family folklore. You know, this gentleman here, if you talk about family folklore, family stories, oh, oh, where, where's the evidence? Where's the, that's why we try to, you think being a member of both families, have Phil McCoy, we don't have family stories, but we try to stay away from that unless we've got some documentation to back it up. <clears throat> he had been indicted in three different states for various crimes, but never served time. I, I just want you to look at this number two there, which I probably heard just number two right there. That's your source. If you go to Wikitree and you click on that number two, it's gonna come up to Tom Dodson. Okay. So again, he was indicted in three states, but never served time, never served time. Did he hide out? Was he, um, uh, what's the deal? Three states, three indictments. Where they at? Wouldn't that have been a great place right there in Wikitree to post those three warrants, those three indictments from three separate states? This is why, this is still on the Basil Hatfield story, but we're almost done here. It's gonna, it's gonna be a short video. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. Yeah. Despite the lore surrounding the legend, few sources back up the stories of cold murders many of which were actually attributed to the McCoys. Number two, cold-blooded murders that was attributed to the McCoys. Okay, can we have some proof, Mr. Dotson? Could you show us some proof of where the McCoys committed cold-blooded murder? Written in the history, people, no proof. No, it didn't happen, there's no proof because it never happened. McCoys didn't do like Devil Ansa's family in the West Virginia Hatfields, they just didn't do it. That's why they had Frank Phillips, that's why they tried to go to the law. He was known as a freelance gunman. Again, why didn't you kill those nine people? He gets the same reward, dead or alive, he would have got the same reward on them if he brought them back strapped over the back of a horse. It'd been a whole lot easier than Frank Phillips was appointed deputy sheriff in June of 1887, Pike County, Kentucky, by Basil Hatfield. Number two, he got that right. It was this role that he is best known for as it included a foray of West Virginia to capture many of the Hatfields. His activities nearly caused a war between Kentucky and West Virginia. His, his foray almost caused a war between Kentucky and West Virginia. Had nothing to do with the Hatfield gang had nothing to do with the Hatfield gang killing people in Kentucky, burning houses and running back to West Virginia. Nothing to do with that. Frank Phillips almost caused a war between the states because he was trying to arrest people on Kentucky criminal charges. <laughs> oh, poor old devil Lance, I swear, he, he had it made. Frank led his posse into Logan County, bent on rounding up Hatfields on in January, he says January 9th, 1888, uh, succeeding uh, bringing the nine in a series of bloody battles. Sheriff Basil Hatfield didn't like Frank's raids and petitioned 
and succeeded in removing his station as deputy sheriff. Frank continued with his raids. You know how Frank continued with his raids? He continued with his raids as a Kentucky State Police Officer. He continued with his raids because Governor Simon Buckner had appointed him as a Kentucky law enforcement officer with Kentucky statewide powers, and he had Kentucky indictment warrants. Before that, the Supreme Court had not ruled that you couldn't go to another state. After Frank went and got those nine and brought them back to Kentucky, and they filed suit, and it goes all the way to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court ruled you cannot go from one state to another state and bring their citizens, take their citizens out without extradition proceedings. Frank never done it no more. He never done it no more. That's why Devil Ants went to his grave with murder warrants. Cap went to his grave with murder warrants. Robert E. Lee went to his grave with murder warrants. Elliot went to his grave with murder warrants. There were several of them because the governor of West Virginia went and extradited them and we couldn't go get them. They protected them. She'll finish up on this video, guys. Uh, on Wicked Tree and all these places, don't believe everything you read. And, and just because a so-called author writes a book, enough stories in a, a bunch of pages to call it a book, don't believe it, guys. Do your research on some of these authors, especially authors that's come out since the Hatfield McCoy miniseries. Everybody and their uncle has wrote a book since then. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Thank you, guys.